So Luis Elizondo, I talked about this last week. Uh, they got their History Channel deal. This is going to air in May. It's called Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation. Uh, big, big false flag narrative. They want to push you to the evil alien thing. And uh, basically, this is the last card that Warner Von Braun has been talking about. And now they're going to push that uh, way of thinking on you, as you will. So here's an article that Luis Elizondo wrote March 6th. I didn't even catch this until later. A lot of, lot of disclosures in this thing. It says, enter the quantum world. What the mechanics of subatomic particles mean for the study of UAP, our universe, and beyond. There are numerous secret programs, secret agencies, secret committees of Congress, secret laws, and even a secret courtroom. This is exactly what Dan Inouye, who is a senator from Hawaii, was talking about before. They all have these, this, all the secret uh, compartments of the government, if you will. They got all their own things, their own Navy, all that stuff. Secrecy allows our government to collect and share information and even make decisions that otherwise could fail or fall into the enemy hands or be exploited. That's understandable. Right? Uh-huh. Governments will go to great lengths to protect the information they consider sensitive. Secret, secretive programs was once run by a, a colleague of mine, Dr. Hal Putoff. Oh, yes. We sure know well, damn well, that was run by Hal Putoff. Because now you have to admit it because that FOIA request was released and he was on that one uh, program that he was researching. Also says he was working on that Stargate program established by the CIA and later dropped by the DIA, or adopted by the DIA. Purpose of the Stargate was to train intelligence collectors in advance human cognitive abilities and use them to collect information. Remote viewing. Hmm. Talked about that a lot on this show, that 9-11 remote viewing stuff. Well, obviously the government was looking into this stuff, and this is, since Luis Elizondo was in these programs, the ATEP, this is what they were looking into, folks. In your face. Admitted, some of the most out there research happening in the government right now is in the world of quantum physics. Yes, stuff they say that is crazy. Teleportation, quantum entanglement, and zero-point energy. Ideas popularized by science fiction shows like Star Trek are providing, proving more real than you might think. Most people would be surprised to learn that we have been teleporting objects such as electrons over a decade. And most recently... The uh, MICAS satellite confirmed successful teleportation of a quantum object from Earth to orbit, smashing the previous record. Yes, teleportation is real. In your face. How do you go from, we don't know what the hell these UAPs are. Uh, we just set up this thing to study it. Uh, we don't know what they are yet. We just want people to ask questions. But they were looking into teleportation, all this crazy stuff. He has to admit it now because this is the next phase. This is why the To The Stars Academy disclosure is so weird because they, they can't say we know all this stuff right away. They have to acclimate the public. Unbelievable. Also, gravity waves. Why are, why are gravitational waves important? Prove that the very space and time we live in, in fact, is in fact flexible and sometimes very flexible. Hmm, maybe for some... Time travel or maybe short, uh, short time over long distance. People that say you can't go faster than light, now they're starting to admit it here. This article also talks about Project Blue Book. He says the, their conclusion was they didn't come up with nothing, and he says, or did they? And then he goes, ATEP has an advantage its predecessors didn't, a better understanding of the quantum world. Perplexing behaviors of UAP... Unidentified aerial phenomenon, folks. The uh, new catchphrase there. Oh. Instantaneous acceleration, hypersonic velocities, low observability, transmedium, yeah, transmedium travel, and even anti gravity can now be explained by quantum physics, not voodoo science. Now we're going to start getting into the disclosure. This is the next step, as I always said. 
after you have that craft, you know, how are they getting here? They have to start priming the public now because they're, they're going to have stuff they're going to release. There's rumors that the next phase of disclosure will be uh, the TR-3B. The government will come out and say, we, you know, this is for the Space Force. We had this secret craft for a while. They could say we've been developing it down in Area 51. You know, here it is. Just bring the public and then, they, oh, this is how it works. Because that's the next step to disclosure, basically saying that these are things we have been working on. Uh, no longer is the quantum world a scientific field of theory, but now a practical field of reality. It might even help demystify the conundrum of faster than light travel, the ability to bend space time in a way where you can go across great distances, distances in an instant and not still not break any laws of physics. Yes, because I had arguments with people at work about this stuff. They say, oh, it's physics. It's proven you can't go faster than the speed of light. Now it's going to start being admitted. You know, how are they going to start releasing this stuff? I got a couple more articles that will start talking about that. The mainstream will start talking about it so people can start getting acclimated to this stuff. Joe Blow says the Philadelphia Project in the chat. Absolutely. What was that, 1943, if my memory serves correct? In your face, they've been testing this stuff for so long. Of course, they got to get it ironed out so it's all safe. So they don't go, oh, when we did the Philadelphia Project and uh, transported it, teleportation, and then people ended up in the hull of the ship, that's not very safe. The article continues, laws are meant to be broken. Physics, we're learning that some laws can be bent. Scientists now believe that there are other things can indeed move faster than the speed of light. Recent observations supporting inflation theory propose that space itself can expand faster than the speed of light. In essence, space between two objects can expand so rapidly that even the objects themselves are not moving faster than light. The space between the two objects certainly does. Quantum physics helps us explain the behavior of UAPs. Oh. UAP don't seem to be bound by the same limitations and interpretations we have of space-time. They're here one moment, gone the next. We can safely assume that whatever technology is being used, it's likely far superior to ours. Oh, yes. It's time for a paradigm change. That's what I've been saying all the time. Paradigm shift. We're ready for it. Let's go. Why are we screwing around anymore? And now it will happen. Back into Project Blue Book, the Air Force compiled reports of tens of thousands of UFO sightings, UFO sightings over 17 years. But in 1966, another Air Force committee published the Condren Report, which conclu concluded that most of the sightings examined were explainable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 2017, the DOD disclosure occurred. That was the uh, To the Stars Academy thing coming out with the ATEP to hold the, uh, Tom DeLong. They released those videos of these UAPs that uh, Air Force fighter pilots were in pursuit of. And it was in October, November-ish area. Um, maybe a little month hype, half a month. Gone. People don't care. They're sick of being lied to. I mean... Every time you look at articles nowadays, there's always some, you know, look at this object on the moon or whatever. It could be an alien craft. And then here's a NASA satellite feed where they see it and they cut the feed. The public's ready. They just got to quit screwing around with this stuff. Uh, DOD, okay, the 2017 DOD disclosure occurred directly contradicting the findings in the Condron report. We realized... We had not discovered all there, is, there was to discover, not by a long shot. ATEP succeeded where others failed simply because our understanding of the physics finally caught up with our observations. Boom! So, some more disclosure. Getting yourselves ready for the next step. And Luis Elizondo said when he did that, uh, he was at some UFO conference or whatever, and he says that next year, which is this year, we're going to have a very different discussion. So they're ramping things up. They're going to use the History Channel to help them 
do this and try to drive. I like that the fact that they were having disclosure. That's a victory. It's just when they got to push this alien threat thing, which stuff could get really messy real quick when you start doing that. Okay. We got some other breakthroughs. Let's move on to some... Good morning. All right, we're going to get into the replicator stuff now. A real world Star Trek replicator is now possible thanks to a new breakthrough. This is on Forbes. So now we're going more mainstream with some of the findings here and making it easy for people to understand what this whole disclosure initiative is all about getting people primed. A startup with alumni from MIT and Yale said it's made a breakthrough in creating next generation material that should make it possible to 3D print literally anything out of thin air. It can happen. New York based Mattershift has managed to create large scale carbon nanotube CNT membranes that are able to combine and separate individual molecules. For example, right now we're working to remove CO2 from the air and turn it into fuels. This has already been done using conventional technology, but it's been too expensive to be practical. Using our tech, I think we'll be able to produce carbon zero gasoline, diesel, and jet fuels that are cheaper than fossil fuels. Here we go. This solves everything. Like I said, people want to talk about the climate change, which I think is just interplanetary. All the planets are going through a shift right now. They wanted to use that last card for... Uh, carbon credits to control the people bring out the free technologies here it's going to solve all that it destroys the argument it's like let's not even argue about it let's just bring out the carbon neutral stuff and then we can end that argument and start stop fighting with each other mcginnis said we're talking about printing matter from the air imagine having one of these devices with you on mars i think they do already uh-huh you could print food, fuels, building materials, and medicines from the atmosphere and soil or recycled parts without having to transport them from Earth. Bingo. And then again, maybe eventually serve up drinks out of thin air. This brings it right back. Self-sufficient stuff. Some people want to argue about automation, destroying jobs, destroying people's way of life. I look at it as, you know, what happened back in the Industrial Revolution. People adapted. They were worried about that automation taking people's regular labor jobs. It made stuff easier for people. People have a higher standard of living, and you're going to like your job more instead of you're busting your balls. So a very, very awesome disclosure just going to start acclimating the people to this stuff. And then it goes on to the next article here as well. No more science secrets. Scientists says the Earth's magnetic field will enable telepathy on a global scale. At first, when people read that, they're like, oh, telepathy. People are going to know what I'm thinking. Oh, my God. I think there might be that shock period for a while, but eventually, you know, I could see this actually helping humanity. This is where we're all headed anyway. Talk about the, you know, if you got a collective, you're just going to want to keep building that up. It won't be like you have to relearn stuff and start over for every individual. It's like, okay, I can build that car. You know what to do. Everybody's going to know how to do the same thing. They can, let's start building this whole thing up. No one's going to really want to uh, have evil intent because they're going to know right away if you have that. The article states Dr. Persinger, cognitive neuro neuro neuroscientist and professor at Laurenton University in Ontario, is convinced that this is not the only possible is not only possible but is imminent in the coming future. Why? How? In short, his pioneering te telepathy research shows a strong correlation between the Earth's magnetic field and the human brain. You know, kind of when. Corey Good was talking about uh, 
with these waves of energy coming and hitting the planet. You know, like him or hate him, I know there's some haters about Corey Good, whatever. I lean towards the side of him being um, authentic. That when these waves come in, people are going to go crazy. And the only way to transmute that is to be in that meditative state, loving state. And you can really see it right now with some people going crazy. The Dems are basically making killing a child post-birth natural and okay. All right. The article continues, Earth's magnetic field is constantly interfacing with our own brains in, in such a manner as to influence our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. There it is. Uh-huh. Few magnetic field can store and transmit all the information of every human brain in history. And if we can tap into this informational reservoir, there will be no more secrets. In such a scenario, for example, we can know the true intentions of large corporations regardless of what they might say through the media. Oh, yeah, definitely. No secrets. You're going to have like the whole uh, vaccine autism thing. <laughs> Everyone will know and I'll be like, oh, it'll be common knowledge, of course. Why would they uh, even fight that? So shout out to the chat here. Thank you guys for joining me live. Much appreciated. George Taylor says, solve climate energy, solve climate change, free energy. It's done and created now. Exactly. Let's bring out this free systems and change the world. I'm totally ready for it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break. We get back from the break. We're going to go into that robot interview thing. And we got some scary minority report stuff. Stay with us on Talk is Cheap. Big tech giants are censoring people's voices. Subscribe to our backup channels on BitChute and DTube. Go to k2d4network.com for all the links. Hey, Dan Hofeld here from Talk is Cheap. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about a new exciting product on our store. The cell phone cases, these just launched. They look so good. They're glossy. It's got the Talk is Cheap logo right there on the back. We got the iPhone with many different models, as well as the Samsung Galaxy series. Show your support for the broadcast. This helps fund the operation and keep things going. Go to k2d4network.com, click over on the store, and check it all out. It's all there. It all helps. Dan Hofeld, Talk is Cheap, out. Hey guys, this is Carrie Walker from Alice Eats the Apple, and you are listening to Talk is Cheap with Dan Hofeld. <laughs> 